I didn't even know what it was until I moved to the city. <laughs> Seems like so long ago. But uh, I was 19. I just moved in with this chick I had only been talking to for a few months. At the time, it was all good until it wasn't. I mean, we started fighting a lot about dumb shit, too. Anyway, one night after yet another fight, probably about her nasty ass rice and beans, I needed to get away, but I had no friends I had no one to talk to. So I just went for a walk. I walked from 163rd to Dykeman in what felt like just minutes. Then I found me a bench and I just sat there, reminiscing, thinking about the good old days. I was missing home. Anyway, after a while, I noticed guys going in and out of the park. At first, I didn't pay no mind, but after a while, it was consistent. So, curiosity got the best of me, and when no one was looking, I went in. And somehow, I found myself in the deepest, darkest part. And that was the beginning of this fucking pain in my chest. This pressure in my head it just won't go away. I'm seeing clearly now, it's all problems Financially on top, emotions rock bottom Approach life with no fear, I know God's got them Still I walk a thin line, the devil I spot them Now I make decisions with caution I'll never be broke again, I force you quick to come up off it It was all good when I was high, now I'm coming down You forced me to a corner, fed the demons, now they coming out I miss the days I didn't know any better a time when I thought people, places, and things were kind to one another and looked out for their brother. A sort of days that made Hail Mary full of grace, amaze, and produce miracles. Sounds poetic and somewhat lyrical, but it was my truth before the cynical. Now, the bridges we burn crumble into mazes that turn in turn with no funhouse phrases. In the end, no shiny prizes, just lies, life, and disguises. I'd give anything to go back to being innocent, a simple child, a wombless civilian. Like when I was five, because that was life. But the times have changed and the world is rearranged. What belonged in the front is now in the back, in the dark pitch black, and I'm sad. The positive that should be celebrated has slowly faded because it's poorly illustrated by those from which we've been manipulated. All of this leaves my heart frustrated, so yes, I question why. Why do I hold on to those days? Why do I put my soul through this hell and fiery blaze? And then I remember, like, joyful Decembers. I miss those days because back then life was easy, breezy, never sleazy. We had not a care in the world before the wars, the whores, and the closeted doors. That is why I miss those days. Yet, you ask me today, and all I can say is that I pray. I pray, dear God, give me the strength to overcome what was done. Take me back to the fun and show me the beautiful midnight and sun because I am your son. Show me the rain without pain. Show me the endless dreams filled with colorful beams that light up the streams of untainted water which lead to the feet of your pure daughter, my wife. I fucked up her vanilla life. Dear God, please show me the way back to that days because I am broken. But by you I have been chosen. So here's a bit, here's a token of that moment when my uncle touched me, violated me, he raped me. I was six when thrown into the mix. Yeah, I was alive, but had died a little inside because I was deprived of a childhood by his manhood. Where was my father, Robin Hood, when I was in despair? Feeling like I was stripped bare and practically put on display for people to stare. Growing up, life was not fair. And even as a preteen way past 18, I felt deceived for what I had perceived had deceased with my ideas of love. I had no white doves and picket fences, no clean gloves. My hands were dirty. He said I was pretty. His eyes masked in pity as he instructed me to dismiss, to reminisce about golden cities. But it's not a myth. I'm here to tell you I once was whole, but this whole is consuming me. I should be king of a happy home, steadfast on my throne, but no. I am now half the man I would be if I even could be at 33. Silently pleading for someone to save me so I don't have to let random men touch me as I flee mentally from this hole that is killing me. They don't know it, but they help fill a void because I was toyed with as a boy. And to them, it is what it is, but it is the reason why I miss those days. When I thought people, places, and things were kind to one another and looked out for their mother. 
their brother, their father, our father, our father who art in heaven. I can't just pray these days away. I can no longer just hope someone rescues me from these mazes where I find lust, these hopeless places with nameless faces, sometimes high on mushrooms just to numb the fact that I'm bruised. I cruise. Not always, and no places off limits either. Malls, parks, bathrooms, hospitals, libraries, you name it, and there's probably a game in, but not always, within a few feet cruising or being cruised. Hookup applications for them smartphones have definitely made it easier, but the good old fashioned way seems to be just as effective, and from what they say, even harder. However, no matter who, what, where, when, why, how it is done, steps must be taken to ensure a successful outcome. Yeah, I wanted that to rhyme. I'm a bit of a poet, you see? I mean, it's fun, if done correctly and safely, that is. Shit, I've had my dick suck at a bus station, train station, cab station, even at a police station, all by the same off-duty officer. <laughs> Wearing different sunglasses as if that made a difference. I'll be general because I'm not trying to put my new friends on blast. However, this work is important and I'm compelled to share this information. Maybe you've learned a thing or two in the process. Also, feel free to take notes because you're getting some insider information. Yeah, I see you curious, George, over there behind the tree. I smelt you. You got that cheap cologne on. Who wouldn't smelt you? <laughs> uh, there was this uh, one time after a long night of partying, I picked up this guy in my block. I took him upstairs. I asked him to turn around and bend over. His ass was incredible. Until... I noticed he had dry wads of toilet paper in his ass. <sighs> it was disgusting. <laughs> the only way that I could explain it was as if he started to wipe and then just gave up. Like, seriously? Just gave up. <laughs> that shit turned me off from the whole thing for a while. That wasn't until I was on the Uptown One train one sunny Monday morning. This older Puerto Rican daddy donning a wedding ring and a massive bulge gave me the eye. Step one, eye contact. This is crucial. Believe it or not, kids, this simple method of nonverbal communication is essentially what determines if the cruisee is ready, willing, and able. But wait, it's not that simple. It never is. Because once you've made the eye contact, you must then determine if the feelings are mutual. Which brings me to step number two, which I like to call response and confirmation. I'm assuming you're a gay man and the one who's doing the cruising. I mean, women cruise, but not in the same way the gays do. The women don't have to cruise. They get off a penis on a daily basis. I see it. I've offered my penis, but they don't want a dirty penis. I've tried to shower, but I can't find a shower. It's getting hard here in the city. <laughs> he proceeded to get hard and adjust it a lot. Right there on the train. I mean, discreetly, of course. Where was I? Oh, yeah. You're a gay guy, and you're the one who's doing a cruising. Effort, discreet effort must be made in order to figure out if the person you're cruising is just being nice by acknowledging you, or they're looking to hook up too. So you must make intense and deliberate eye contact numerous times, not only to establish, but ensure a connection. To know me is to know I'm not one to argue with Dick. So I did what I had to do. Called out of work, took him home, and played with it all day. <laughs> You could judge me if you want, but the insecure, abused, and battered boy me from the projects was flattered. Flattered that I was the object of his desires. It was, it's kind of like I felt loved and shit. Like he loved me enough to get hard. I know that sounds strange, but whatever. Anyway, so. Side note, if a guy looks at another guy more than a few times, meaning if a guy looks at you more than a few times, I doubt he's just being nice, so go for it. But just be careful because you may encounter a heterosexual, homophobic man who will gladly shout you out on the train during rush hour for looking at him too much in front of everybody. 
It didn't happen to me, it happened to a friend of mine. Saw it with my own two eyes, heard it with my one good ear. Moving on, step three. If there is a connection, you must respond to the eye contact exchange with an aggressive yet still nonverbal sexual gesture in hopes that it will be reciprocated. This further confirms the willingness of the other party to engage in a sexual encounter. Let's get a little deeper. If he's dominant, which I've been told means a top, he'll grab his penis or a single nod. If he's submissive, which I've been told means the bottom, he'll lick his lips or stare ferociously at your bulge. Either way, kid, you must respond however you see fit, no judgment, in order to get to move into location number two. You know why? Because sex in public is illegal, and I'd hate for anyone to get caught up in the vicious cycle of systemic racism. You may think it's not the same thing, but it's the same thing. Minorities, all minorities, they like to keep them down, kick them while they're down too. This is why I'm homeless. I used to live in San Francisco and look what's going on over there. I, I practically walked to New York. That was around this time I was back at the gym. I had gained some weight from my depression. I just felt like guys weren't really hitting on me the same. So I put a lot of time and energy into my workouts. And one day after an intense set, I was cruising the locker room. Now, those gym towers are only yay big. And he was yay big. So eventually, I followed him into the steam room. And let's just say I blew off a little more than just some steam. It was hot though. And hot too. But I was nervous because I couldn't get arrested again. So, I just played for a few minutes. And something about the smell of steam makes you nauseous. It's important to note for you newbies that whatever aggressive, non-verbal sexual gesture you choose will determine who is top and who is bottom. So choose wisely, because if you didn't clean out, you shouldn't be out. Listen, living in these streets, all these years, I've seen some shit. No, 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 literally, I've seen some shit. Look, I could go on and on about this, but I'll just say this. I've come, <coughs> see what I did there? Anyway, I've come to the conclusion that when someone's on a mission, whether gay, straight, or whatever, they won't stop until they get what they want. If you've gotten this far, you're now at location number two or three, and are about to finally communicate verbally. Although it is unlikely something may not happen at this point, you never know because of the question. But wait, kids, there's more. The question. Listen, this question has single-handedly been responsible for making or breaking a potential hookup. I've seen it with my own two eyes, heard it with my one good ear, and I don't lie, I'm a Catholic. You ready for the question? The question is, what are you into? Can you believe that, folks? What are you into? You know, I thought sex was super simple until I met my friends, the gays. Oh, man, it's complicated. We're all trying to feel something, whether that's a mouth, a hole, or a void. And you know, it affects more than just the people doing a cruising, too. I guess it's deeper than sex, you know? You know? don't like discussing the circumstances because honestly it doesn't matter all that matters is that he was the most amazing person and human to human he rocked my world from day one I love that boy <laughs> he had a big dick and a big heart look I am no size queen but when a beautiful Boricua boy from the Bronx drops his pants and a damn that touches his knees, you can't help but fall in love. <laughs> but all jokes aside, he was a great guy too. I think it was love at first sight. Listen, the sex thing, it was just the icing on the cock. He cake. Okay. Oh my baby, he had asked for days two till meal. But I think what I loved the most was how we met. Yeah, it, it wasn't in a bar, and it wasn't online, and it wasn't your typical gay scenario. It was at a bodega up in Albany. We were both playing numbers. How butch is this shit? We both were playing two, 16, and 68, and it was a wrap. 
Sounds cheesy, but that boy changed my life. And the way that I walked. <laughs> now, we met on a Monday, and by Wednesday, he was already talking about moving in together. I know, I had to pinch myself just to make sure he wasn't a lesbian, because this was too good to be true. I've always been this sensitive, hopeless, romantic, not a good combo when growing up in the hood, but for as long as I can remember the idea of a true love, soulmate, house, kids, car, all of that appealed to me. But when I got on the scene, I quickly realized that not everyone felt like I did. It was always lust at first sight with these hoes. And then this son of a bitch comes along and I'm done. I swear at the time, I didn't think I deserved him and I was very vocal about it. I told all my friends that I didn't know what my boo saw in me, but maybe, maybe it was, you know, the in me. But I would always ask, why me? And when he was rubbing my feet and stuff, he said, Baby, you're perfect. Your eyes tell my story and your heart is its keeper. I lived. He was so smooth like that. In a very short time, our world showed forces and we were a team. You know, everyone had a problem with the age difference, but I loved every minute of it. Our love and respect for one another was so deep rooted. It was on some next level super soul <laughs> Sunday type thing. And the best part of it all was that it was mutual. He gave me the world because I needed it. I needed him and he needed me, no questions asked. We helped each other heal the pain of our broken homes and damaged DNA. Inevitably, we moved in together, and it was only a year more that we relocated to Florida. Everything happened so fast, but he always mentioned from the beginning how he wanted to get away. I didn't take him seriously. I just knew that wherever he went, I was going because I could not lose my man. And he said he didn't want to lose me. That move was stressful, though. He put a lot of pressure on his mind, body, soul. And before I knew it, he was physically changing. One night after a near perfect day spent together, he, he collapsed. And it was all downhill from there. That beautiful Puerto Rico boy from the Bronx, who I love so much, withered away before my eyes in the months that followed. During that time, my mind, it flashed with all the good things. My first date, my first kiss, all those things really helped carry me. They convinced me that we were going to be okay, that we were going to pull through, that I just thought that we... Pleasure, escape, obsession, adventure, conditioning. Folks, we're all human, man. We're emotional creatures. We're built uniquely different. But society, oh man, society's messed up. They like to label people, places, and things because it makes them feel better. To know which box you fit in, you know? But they forget 
that they're probably the ones who put us in the box in the first place, forced us into the box actually, and just messed us up mentally. Society messes people up mentally because of labels, judgment, criticism. But let me remind you, unfortunately, some of us are only products of our environments, victims, if you will, of our circumstances. It's a cycle, and you know how I feel about cycles. It's actually sad. We forget that we're more alike than we are different. So let's just love each other. I've tried to love people, but because I smell, they don't want me to love them. We're all children of God, whatever God you believe in or don't. At the end of the day, it's an energy bigger than us, bigger than hate, bigger than an idea, bigger than our own imaginations, actually. I have imagination. Did I tell you I'm writing a play? I've interviewed some folks in my neighborhood. There's this one guy, his name is Lewis. His partner died years ago of AIDS. The poor kid is still torn up about it. I've also interviewed Robin. He's a Puerto Rican fella. Originally from Jersey, now he lives here in the Bronx. He has a lot of sex in these parks. I've seen him have sex in the park, in the bathroom in the park, in the car by the park, everywhere. Also, I've interviewed Manny, the married fella down the street. I didn't know he was a homosexual or that he was into men until I saw him going into one of the adult bookstores. But, you know, I'm doing a lot of research because I'm going to make this one a good one. I'm going to make my mother proud even though she's the one who kicked me out of my house. I miss my mother. I miss the connection. I miss people not judging me. I miss people loving me. I have lots of love to give, just no one to give it to. Pride. No hope, every night he's gonna die Without dope, all he wanna do is cry No dope, no point to be a 